can you tell me about about the uh, books you're working on? Well, I'm working. Um, I've actually completed one book on Florida forts on the edge of empire. It's a, it's a way to learn about Florida history through the existing forts that you can actually go and visit. And it's sort of like a geographical tour. It starts up uh, in Fernandina Beach, goes all the way down the East Coast, all the way out to the Dry Tortugas to Fort Jefferson, back up side the West Coast, and then all the way to Pensacola. And believe it or not, there's not that many forts that you can actually go and see in Florida. There's probably about 15 of them. Uh, and there's a chapter on each one and it's sort of like a travel history book, but it's not about armaments uh, It's really I'm a social historian So it's about what happened at the fort or what type of battles may have happened at the fort So there's not a lot about uh, you know the actual weapons they used. It's a very social history of these forts and uh the pandemic was a great time to finish the book. Not always a great time to sell a book because you can't really go out and promote it, but hopefully I'm going to be able to go out and promote the book even more here soon. And uh, it's a really easy read. I've worked on it for five years. I got inspired to do the book through the C.C. and Hyatt Brown uh, collection of Florida historical landscapes, uh, which we own the largest uh, collection of historical Florida landscapes through C.C. and Hyatt Brown, which has been absolutely, absolutely amazing to the museum and the community here. And in the exhibition were several landscapes of forts. And I did a presentation uh, at the library, at your library, believe it or not, a long time ago on that. And several people came up and said, hey, is, do you have a book? Is this a book? Can I buy the book? And I'm like, wow, that's a great idea. I never thought about that. So like five or six years later, I finally finished the book. It's very hard when you have a family and kids and a full-time job uh, to, to write and do a book. I'm also working on another book now called Off the Beaten Path. I'm a native Floridian, I grew up in Miami, I've lived all over the state uh, for long periods of time, believe it or not. Uh, Central Florida now the longest. And I love traveling to kind of the hinterlands of Florida. And so many people uh, I know will say, hey, Zach, we're gonna go here. What, what's off the beaten path that we can go and see that's not too touristy, but it's kind of different. And I would give them ideas. And so I actually purchased a book online. I won't mention the name. It was called Florida Off the Beaten Path. And basically the book just went down and listed every state park and every single attraction and every single museum. And it had Daytona beaches off the, off the beaten path and Winter Park and Sarasota. I'm like, these are not off the beaten path places. And people complain, well, what about, you know, people who live here off the beaten path or people who actually live here in Florida and not this high tourist stuff? And that's where I got the idea. So I've been working on that and I have about 75 locations throughout the state uh, where I think a lot, these are not normally in a lot of these off the beaten path books. So I'm working on that and I'm about a quarter of the way done with uh, that book. And uh, I'm very excited about uh, that publication when it comes out. Hopefully I'll have it done in about the next six months from today. Following our interview, we decided to take a tour of the museum. And of course, the first place we started, the prehistory of Florida room. Prehistory of Florida Gallery. The Museum of Arts and Sciences has dedicated a portion of the museum to the prehistory of Florida. This section of the museum includes preserved insects, butterflies, shells, and teeth, along with the remains of a giant ground sloth, mastodon, and glyptodon that were all found in our own backyard. Behind me is the American mastodon I actually helped discover this and excavate this off of Nova Road just north of here. They were digging a, a retention pond and the workers hit what they thought was a dinosaur. Dinosaurs actually don't live in Florida. They never did because Florida was underwater during the time of dinosaurs. It was on Thanksgiving weekend 2011. They shut the entire uh, pond excavation down, which was a drainage pond, and uh, they let the museum come in and excavate. Now what ended up happening is that this skull right here, or this, I'm sorry, the lower jaw with the teeth and the mandible, they sent me a picture of that. They said, oh, we got this dinosaur. And I said, well, go ahead and send me the picture. And I looked at it on the email and basically what it was, was once you see the teeth, you can positively identify that animal. I said, oh, they got an American mastodon. So they invited me out and then we found this uh, American mastodon out. It got hit by a bulldozer. It was a complete skeleton at one point, but it got smashed by a big bulldozer. So we, we excavated and recovered what we can and we put in silhouette uh, what we found because it was just too busted up and some of it had already been carted off. So we're actually here in the prehistory gallery of Florida.
Also, I'm in a TV show, uh, there's about 15 episodes, called The Fossil Hunters. It airs on WDSC Channel 15 here in Daytona Beach, and it's about fossiling in Florida, and there's a whole group of us, uh, amateur paleontologists, and we go around and we look at other museums, collections, private collections, and then we also do a lot of fossiling ourselves and document uh, what we find. The Lohman Planetarium is a digital planetarium featuring 94 reclining seats. An immense environment is generated 360 degrees around you from our OmniStar projector fitted with a fish eye lens capable of displaying vibrant and colorful HD content across our expansive universe on a 40 foot hemispherical dome. The Root Family Museum was established in uh, late 2001 and features one of the largest Coca-Cola memorabilia collections in the world. It's an immense collection of teddy bears, Indy series racing cars, trains, cars, and other popular Americana. The Charles and Linda Williams Children's Museum is the only hands-on science center between Jacksonville and Orlando. The Children's Museum is home to interactive exhibits that demonstrate various principles of science. The Cuban Foundation Museum is home to one of the most important collections of Cuban fine and folk art outside of Cuba. The collection chronicles 300 years of Cuban history and art in more than 200 objects. The Mary Louise Marzullo Gallery contains antique weapons and firearms from an ivory inlaid German crossbow to the murderous Napoleonic swords, muskets, and sabers. The Elaine and Thurman Gillespie Jr. Gallery contains African tribal objects most collected and donated to the museum during the 1980s. The Helena and William Schultz Gallery of Chinese Art showcases over 80 pieces representing thousands of years of Chinese history. The Anderson C. Bouchel Center for the Study of International Decorative Arts and its adjacent gallery contains over 600 objects from the museum's collections. The C.C. and Hyatt Brown Museum of Art is home to the largest collection of Florida art in the world and features a rotating collection of over 2,600 Florida-themed oil and watercolor paintings. Have you always wondered what was hiding in storage at the museum? Well, wonder no more. The Helene B. Roberson Visible Storage Building is exactly that, an open storage format that contains art and artifacts not currently on exhibition. Tuscawilla Preserve is a lush 90-acre virgin flora, coastal hydrocamate, and a habitat for numerous endangered species of flora and fauna. It opened in 2005 and the education complex contains over half mile of boardwalks and nature trails as well as an education center and interactive learning stations. Kenneth Worcester Dow and Mary Moen Dow Gallery of American Art contains a large and growing collection of American furniture, painting, watercolors, drawings, and decorative arts, including silver and glass. Don't forget to visit the Sculpture Garden. There are many galleries throughout the museum that are ever-changing. Even if you've been to the museum in the past, there's always something new to see. Visit moas.org to find out hours of operation, events, current exhibitions, and so much more. And if you're left wanting to know even more about the items and collections you've seen, don't forget to visit your local library for related titles.